It's the headline of this week, the arrival of our nation's first COVID-19 vaccines. We know many of you have questions about the vaccine, its safety and its effectiveness. And here to help us answer those questions are two of our infectious disease experts at UT Southwestern, Dr. Ruben Arasaratnam and Dr. Julie Trevetti. Thank you both for joining us. We're hearing a lot about messenger RNA vaccines. So tell us what that means and what is messenger RNA? Vaccines um, work by basically teaching the immune system to recognize the virus or infectious agent. And by doing that, that means a person's immune system is primed to defend itself should they get infected. Now, there's a number of ways that vaccines uh, can be administered. We can actually use all of the virus, either modified or inactivated, or actually use part of a virus, like the protein within a viral coat, to actually generate that immune response. Now, messenger RNA, or mRNA vaccines, essentially supply the genetic code or blueprint to your cells so that your own cells can actually make the vaccine, and in particular, a protein called spike protein, which is a very important protein for this virus that it uses to enter those cells. And so when we make that protein through the vaccine, we actually then produce antibodies that can defend ourselves from the virus. Now, it's really important to understand that these mRNA vaccines, even though they carry the genetic blueprint for the spike protein, they don't mess or alter with our genes. And unlike those live vaccines, there's no risk of actually getting the COVID-19 infection from these types of mRNA vaccines. Dr. Trevetti, we began vaccinating people at UT Southwestern this week. I know you were one of the first to be vaccinated. Tell us what that was like and what you're hearing about how long the vaccine lasts in terms of protection. Yes, it was certainly a momentous day to be able to be vaccinated on the first day that we had these available. Um, the process was really quite smooth at UT Southwestern. Honestly, you didn't even really feel the pinch. The gauge of the needle is a really small gauge. And the amount of a fluid in that uh, vaccine itself is quite small as well. So it was a really smooth process. Um, what we anticipate as far as how long the immunity will last, thus far, we're anticipating at least three to four months, but the trials are still in their early stages as far as these phase three studies. So really, as the individuals who've been enrolled in these trials continue to remain in the studies and have blood work done and a subsequent follow-up, we'll be able to learn more about how long the immunity lasts for us. So hopefully more than three to four months. So we know that both the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine require two doses. Tell us the rationale behind having those two doses. So from the very early beginning, um, these vaccines in the phase one trial were really studied to look at what is the best timing and uh, dose that needs to be used to generate those types of immune responses. And it really does appear that two doses are necessary to generate the kind of immune responses that we really want to see that will allow us to be protected from this virus. And those two doses are three weeks apart? For the Pfizer vaccine, it's um, three weeks apart, zero and 21 days. And for the Moderna vaccine, it's four weeks apart, zero and 28 days. Dr. Trevetti, my patients uh, are asking me, should I go ahead and be vaccinated as soon as possible, or should I kind of wait and see how it goes? What would be your response to that question? I think you should take the first vaccine that is available to you as long as it's appropriate for you. Um, you know, we're lucky that we have the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine will be released shortly. And then there are a few other candidates that hopefully will be coming onto the market in the next several months. But by the time we're thinking about the general public, um, as far as what vaccine might be appropriate for them, they might have a choice of several different vaccines. I think that sometimes there might be some unique situations, but otherwise really to take the first vaccine that's available for you. If someone has had COVID-19 and recovered, should they get the vaccine and when should they get it? I recommend once, um, uh, even if they've had COVID-19, as long as they've recovered, that they do get the vaccine. And the reason is this, is because we know that immunity after COVID-19 is very, very variable. Um, and it depends on the type of infection you've had and how severe it is. And there's no guarantee that you're protected after getting COVID-19 the first time. And so in line with current recommendations, I would strongly recommend that people still get the vaccine uh, regardless of whether they've had COVID-19 or not in the past. Dr. Trevetti, are there any people who should not be vaccinated based on what we know now? There's probably several groups of individuals that might be of concern that might be in maybe the higher risk category. So individuals who have had anaphylaxis, 
to the vaccine or vaccine components in the past really should have a discussion with their primary care provider about the best way to proceed. But we really recommend that everyone be vaccinated with this, regardless of whether you've had COVID or not in the past. Dr. Tavetti, what would your advice be for a woman who's pregnant or planning to become pregnant as they think about the vaccine? We would continue to recommend that they receive the vaccine or at least consider receiving the vaccine as long as uh, once it's offered to them. And actually, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists has also recommended that the vaccine be offered to women who are pregnant, about to become pregnant, or even those who are breastfeeding. The pace of science during this pandemic has been unlike anything else we've ever seen the vaccine development has gone very quickly. What would you say to people, to patients that might be concerned that some steps were skipped along the way in developing the vaccine and deploying it to our community? There have been no corners that have been cut um, with regards to safety in the development of these vaccines. And it's certainly important to know that the trial that led to the emergency use authorization of the Pfizer mRNA vaccine is exactly the type and quality and size of trial that we would want for any other vaccine, with the only limitation being that we haven't had the chance to do long-term follow-up. We often hear a statistic quoted about how it takes many, many years to make a vaccine. But it's important to note that several of those vaccine candidates back then didn't have the advantage of the technology that we have now. And furthermore, they didn't have the huge scientific collaboration and financial resources that were poured into making a COVID-19 vaccine. And what that allowed us to do is to develop this vaccine using several phases in parallel rather than in sequence, and in particular do manufacturing in parallel, which allowed us to get to this point where we can actually distribute vaccines to this day. Dr. Tavetti, as someone who's received the vaccine, what side effects should patients expect um, from getting the vaccine and how should they treat them? Yeah, so the most common side effects, I would say, are akin to what we see with other types of vaccines, such as seasonal influenza. So one individual might have some pain or tenderness at the injection site. There might be some associated redness, um, some soreness in the muscle of that area. There might be some other more systemic types of symptoms, such as headache, feeling tired, fatigued, or maybe in some situations, a low-grade fever. Really, a lot of these symptoms can be treated symptomatically with some over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medications, depending on what is appropriate. Dr. Trevetti, is the vaccine approved for children? And if so, what age? Currently, the emergency use authorization is for children ages 16 and older. So it is not currently indicated for children under that age. Um, what we are hoping for in the future are additional studies to be done, looking at either different dosing or different types of vaccines in the pediatric population. So hopefully there will be more information to come on that. Once you get the vaccine, are you immediately protected? Can you go back to going to restaurants and going to retail stores? It takes about um, five to six weeks from the first dose. So that's two weeks after the second dose to, to get protection. But it's very, very important to understand that these vaccines were studied emphasizing those protective measures that we usually do. So wearing a mask, uh, watching our distance, washing hands. And so it's very, very, very important that even if we get the vaccine, that for the foreseeable future, we need to continue doing those measures until we've reached some degree of herd immunity and then we can kind of consider relaxing those measures. And how many people will have to receive the vaccine for us to develop that herd immunity? It's currently estimated that about 70% of the population would have to be vaccinated in order to achieve that immunity. Once you receive the vaccine, can you still carry the coronavirus? So the studies that were designed looked at the ability of the vaccine to protect yourself from symptomatic COVID-19 disease. It didn't look at the ability to carry or transmit the virus to other people. So theoretically, that's still possible. And that's why we really do emphasize that you still need to continue wearing masks for the foreseeable future and continue that distancing Dr. Trevetti is someone who studies vaccines, who's an expert in coronaviruses, and now who's had the vaccine. What's the, the, the one takeaway message that you would give to our audience after the program today? We're in a really privileged position to be here at this moment with uh, many advances of science that we've seen in the past several months. I think that we owe it to each other and to our community to be able to do what is right. 
And that includes vaccinating ourselves as soon as possible and as soon as vaccines are available, as well as continuing to implement these protective measures that Dr. Arasaratnam had referred to about masking and social distancing. This is the only way we're going to get through this. On a personal and professional level, what does having the COVID-19 vaccine available to the public mean to you? It's really a glimmer of hope, um, a light at the end of the tunnel that hopefully this disastrous journey will come to an end soon. There have been far too many individuals who have lost their lives. My hope with this vaccine is that it'll allow healthcare workers to continue to provide the type of care that they can with having some reassurance of some safety, as well as um, some protective measures then for our community and our society to emerge on the other side. In the midst of a seasonal surge of the pandemic and the daily death toll rising, um, this is welcome relief, very much welcome relief. And it's the what uh, it's the beginning of the end, and I hope it will be the beginning of our uh, journey to um, curbing this pandemic and restoring some degree of normality. Well, it's certainly an exciting time with the vaccine becoming available to the public. So I want to thank both of you for being here and for the great knowledge that you gave, gave us all today. Thank you, Dr. Warner. Thank you, Dr. Warner. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us. For more information about the COVID-19 vaccines, please visit our website. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy holidays.